Hey, Nomies, we're back. And we're off on another mushroom adventure. I hope you're ready. This time it's extra special because we had a Nomi friend of ours come into town. If you watched the last video, you know Nomi Rob came in for the night. If you didn't, you didn't watch the video. Well, it's okay. I'll, I'll be okay. Anyway, he didn't have much time. He got here pretty late. Got some dinner in him. Got some good sleep. Woke up early in the morning and off we were on a big mushroom hunt adventure. And of course we are taking you along. Before we get to that, we had another special guest come in from far, far away. And he's going to help us do some identification as the mushrooms. What do you think about that? I know who it is, so I'm excited. Before we get on to that stuff, I got some business to take care of, some shout outs to make and what's going on. First of all, a big huge shout out to everyone that made it out to one of our mushroom walks this year. I only had a chance to put on two of them, but both of them were awesome. Got to meet some amazing people. Even got to meet some nobies face to face. And one of them, oh, check this out. Brought the gnome scatter a beautiful picture of mushrooms. Look at that. Thank you, Cheyenne. Not only that, this gnome's an artist. Look, look, a needle felt mushroom. All right, I'm gonna hang this back up on the wall. I gotta find a nice home for this, and we'll be off. All right, where were we? Where were, uh, oh yeah. You ready? Let's go. All right, Nomies, breakfast is over. We got our gathering utensils. We're gonna go on a little bit of a mushroom hunt. We're gonna see if we can find some winter chanterelles out there in the swamp. So, are you ready for this? I am, let's do it. All right, let's go. Now we don't need much for hunting chanterelles. Something to put them in, something to keep you from getting wet. Cause we are going out in the swamp. And it's been raining so much, it's gonna be fun. But always look along the way, folks, because you never know what you might find for dinner. Alright, it's gonna be fun. Oh, it's wet out here. It may be too wet for mushrooms, but we're gonna find out. Now in this area of Alaska, we have what's called the winter chanterelle or the yellowfoot chanterelle. It's not that one. And uh, they grow out here amongst the scraggly black spruce shrub. Mm -hmm. So you wanna look along the edges of the black spruce. And they're basically almost the same shape as these leaves from the uh, salmon berries except for their brown. Oh, about the size of a quarter to a half dollar, depending on the... Yeah, they're not very big at all. Both. You can see the moose trail. It's full. Goes all the way out through here, and that's where we're sort of gonna follow. Along the edge, anyway. Because this is where we wanna look. All right, we're gonna trudge along here for a little bit. Not guaranteed to find anything. It is still a little bit early and there is a lot of water. So we're just gonna look around here for a little bit and who knows, we might find something, we might not. That's why they call it hunting. All right, we are finding some mushrooms that are the right color and the right size. But when you pick them, 
This is not a chanterelle, folks. It does not look like a trumpet. It's got the right color gills, but it's got to taper down into the stem to be a true chanterelle. Well, I did spot something yummy here. This, if you've been following around with our videos, is the yellow Rasula. These are mushy from being out here in the rain. Oops. In fact, that stem, yeah, that's not even worth saving. It's been out here too long. Same with this one. Yeah, yellow Rasula. Yummy! If it didn't have worms. And here, folks, we have a red Rasula. They're very, not acidic, what's acrylic, alkaline? So they are very nippy when you eat them. They ain't gonna hurt you, but they don't taste very good, so. Looks pretty, leave it alone. Bingo! Right, here's what we're looking for. This is the winter yellowfoot chanterelle. Now you notice how, like I said earlier, it's a trumpet shape, it goes down and it transitions into the stalk. Perfect eater, right there. Trumpet. Yellowfoot chanterelle. Oh baby! Rob, you're gonna be going home with some yumminess, buddy. That's one right there too. See, once I, I told you, once you spot them, and this means it's the beginning of chanterelle season, folks. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Because they're my favorite mushroom in the whole world. Now we've really got to start looking. Where are you, mushy, 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 mushy? Bingo. They're tiny. We'll give them a day or two. There's another. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Might get enough to send you home with, Rob. There you go. At least enough for a steak. Here's some more. Red Rasulas. Yeah. There's one kind of poke right there. I don't know if that's one or not. That's one, but I'd let it grow up yeah. a little bit. Let's At least get to be a. Throw them. Don't throw them back on the ground. Oh, there's another one there, so remember this spot. Yeah. See all around these little bushes. Another pretty red whistle. And another. And another. And some chandrails, baby. Alright. I need both hands and both eyes. Because we're running out of time. Rob's got some other stuff to do, and we got to get enough to send him home enough for dinner. So, let's get to pick. Oh, what do we got? That's something in the lichen family. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I was just curious. But that's the end of the lichen family. All right. There's some tiny ones over there. They might want to wait on those. Yeah. Save some for later. But you can see the more the leaves turn, they're that color. And that's a leaf, that's not a mushroom. So you really gotta keep your eyes peeled. The later in the season it goes. Again, shut this camera off. Cause I gotta pick mushrooms. All right, haven't been doing too bad. Got enough for catch, clean, and cook. How'd you do, Rob? I'm pretty good. Uh-huh, nice. We're gonna wander way back to the road and keep looking as we go. But this is gonna be 
probably in every other day occurrence. Coming out here and filling these buckets up. Beautiful yellow rosula. All right, let's head back. Almost there. All right, here's Rob's score. We're gonna send him home with these and he's gonna make something yummy for dinner. Put them in a paper bag so they helps dry them out. Yeah. There's your mushrooms. Thank you, brother. All right, he's off to, where, what do you gotta do now? Home Depot, Three Bears, Walmart. And back to Telkeaton at what time to catch a train? Uh, train runs at one. So you gotta be back to Telkeaton by one, so. All right, buddy. Right, you got your mushrooms? Got my mushrooms. Get you going. Awesome seeing you, man. You, All right, man. Time. Yes, sir. All right, Nomies. We made it back from the moose bog. Fortunately, Rob had to go catch a train back home. Oh. I know, I know, I know. He'll be back sometime or we'll be going back up there. Calm down. I'd like to get a pound, separate it out, get it in the dehydrator, and see what we end up after it's all dried up. Because remember, after all, mushrooms are 80 to 90% liquid water compared to dry water or dehydrated water. We're also going to do some identification. Because when you go out there, you got to know what you're looking for. Let's see how we did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not bad. I'm guessing about a pound, a little over a pound, maybe a pound and a half. Let's, hey, let's get the scale out and find out. And break out our trusty scale. And a bowl. Alright, what's your guess? How much we got here? Hmm? How much we got? How much we got? Oh, let, let me get you close. Get you closer so you can see. There we go. How about this? I'm going to turn this a little bit on. There we go. You ready? Look at that. One pound, three and a half ounces. You know what that means? We got three and a half ounces of mushrooms to catch, clean, and cook with. After all, this is catch, clean, cook. Close. Get in there. One more. Oh, maybe one more. Oh, maybe one more. Maybe one more. Oh! Put down back. Oh! Down back. There we go. Ding! Alright, it's about to rain to beat the band, so I'm gonna get these in the dehydrator, get myself cleaned up, dried up, and then we'll make something for dinner. Let's get these off to the dehydrator. Uh -huh. There we go. Just gonna spread these out in a nice even layer. Oops. Almost lost one. There we go. Okay. That's a pound. Turn on the fan. This will probably take three or four days to dry with the humidity we got going right now. But uh, yeah, we'll come back when they're dry and weigh them up. Dry nicely, my little pretties. And get, get, get in. Let's talk about cleaning. This is one of the easiest mushrooms I have found to clean ever. Basically, when you pick them up out of the ground, you'll get a little 
end like that that has some roots and some moss attached to it and stuff like that. Usually what I do is I just pick them. I'll grab them by that end. And if you got a little bit of a fingernail, just cut it off. Put it in the bucket. Toss that. Spread the love. That's it. Time for some ID. Voila! Here we go, folks. This is a few varieties that you will find growing together out there in the bog. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things belongs in your tummy. The other two, you can eat. It ain't going to make you sick. But generally what the books say is they're so few and far between that they're not worth harvesting. What to look for? Basically, all of these come in very similar shades of color, tan and brown. And at this angle, when you're looking at them, they actually do look fairly similar. In fact, here's a picture of what they look like growing together. Aw, oh, look at them all playing nice together. Which one's the chanterelle? Now that you've seen that, let's figure out which one of these is the beautiful winter yellowfoot chanterelle that we want to put in our belly. Can you tell? Do you know? Leave it in the comments if so. Okay, first thing you're looking for with the yellowfoot chanterelle, they have a trumpet shape. So, these right here, like I said, are very similar. This one here has more of a nipple sticking out. And last time I checked, trumpets don't have nipples sticking out of their horns unless you put one of them pluggy doos in them. But that doesn't count. What do you think, Nomi One Kenobi? This is not the mushroom you are looking for. This one here actually has a bit of a dimple. To the untrained eye, one could say, that could be a trumpet. Uh-huh. How about this one? Also not the mushroom you are looking for. However, this beautiful little gem right here, thank you, Mr. Raven, for being part of our movie. This one here, very distinctive. Well, actually, it's hard to tell because it sort of grew together. Mr. Raven, please. Thank you. Anyway, where were we? A trumpet. Let me see if I can find a better one that looks more like a trumpet. Voila! Here we go. Check it out. You have found the mushroom you are looking for. You're so smart, Nomi One Kenobi. Anything else for us? Any other wisdom? Thank you for asking. To be a Nomi, you must hit the subscribe. This is what you want to do. You know you do. Thank you. See, it's got like a, like a hole, like an indentation in there. It actually goes all the way through the stem. We'll slice this in half here in a little bit, and I'll show you what the uh, innards look like. But this is what you want to look for. Trumpet shape. Da -da -da -da. Besides that trumpet shape, you want to look at the gill structure. The gill structure of this one. Very irregular. They all look different. Gill structure on this one. Also irregular, but that does not make this a chanterelle. It just makes it irregular gill structure. This one here, regular gill structure. Nice and straight, kind of even. And what I mean about that, let, let me show you a different mushroom so you sort of get an idea what I'm talking about. This here is one of our beautiful gray-green rasulas. See the gill structure on this? Nice, straight, even lines spread all the way around. This one here, your regular gill structure. The very third and last characteristic that will definitely guarantee this is a chanterelle is where the gill structure meets the stem. It, there is not an abrupt stop. It's an irregular, it'll taper down into the stem, sort of become a part of the stem. Here's a good side by side. One on the left, yum. One on the right, leave it alone. Here's one that's different. You notice the gill structure stops abruptly at the stem, does not taper down into the stem. Same thing with this one. 
very abrupt stop of the gill structure. So, not a chanterelle, not a chanterelle. Oop, chanterelle. Real quick, let's slice this one in half and see what they look like on the middle part. You'll notice that that little hole extends all the way down into the stem. Hollow stem, gills that taper into the stem, it looks like a trumpet going in the belly. All right, now that we got this all over with, time to cook something. All right, here's what we got to cook with. I'm gonna make a decent little meal. But while I was wandering around, we also have this one, so I think we'll add this to the mix. And even better, da -da -da -da! let's add some royalty. We got ourselves a big king here. All right, I'm gonna get all these cleaned up, ready to go. While I do that, let's talk about nutrition. Moby Mahomas, the chanterelle is a common name of several species of fungi in this genre. Today we talk in Yellowfoot. They may be orange, yellow, or white, but they are precious in our sight. Those are them polysaccharides, chitosin, and chitin. No, not that kind. The kind that does amazing stuff like this. Check it out. All right, I'm hungry. You're on your own. Let's cook something. All right, gnomies. We are going to cook something this evening that is absolutely yummy-licious in one of the ways I love to use my wild chanterelle mushrooms. So, what are we going to need? Well, a couple frying pans. We'll get into the details of especially that one later and why we want to use that one. And why, why do we want it? Well, I guess I better tell you what we're cooking, huh? All right, we're making a wild mushroom and Swiss omelet. What are we going to need? Wild mushrooms, of course. We've got our yellow foots, and we got a rasula. That king I showed you earlier was a little too wormy to use, so I went and spread it in the yard. Spread the love. What else? Well, for making an omelet, we're gonna need some good farm fresh oh! eggs. <laughs> Better go get that. Hopefully it didn't break. <laughs> Crap, so good. We're also gonna need an onion from our garden. Cheese of your choice. We're using Swiss. Sargento, like Sargento. Good cheese. Not a sponsor, but you could be. Some salt. Some pepper. Some. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you don't know this stuff, you best. Some good butter. And something new I'd like to introduce you guys to if you're not familiar with this little green leaf plant right here. This is called a plantain. Look down upon it to know more. Do what you can to get it in your body. Come on. Most people think it's a weed. You'll find it all over your driveway, in your yard. We'll talk about this here in a little bit and how amazing this plant is. Anyway, it's going to be our spinach substitute. I'm going to put it somewhere here. There we go. Alright, I think that's it. Let me clear the way here and we'll get to cooking. Okay, we're going to start off with our first pan here. Get it nice and hot. Okay, once that heats up, you want to add your mushrooms here. Remember, mushrooms, lots of water. You want to start them off in a dry, hot pan. Get some of that water out of there. The reason you want to get that water out of there is because you want to add other yumminess to it. And they're sponges. They'll suck it up. Remember? Alright, those are warming up. We're going to take our onion from our garden. Slice it up here. See all that water coming out of those? And that little bit of salt that sort of helps that water come out a little bit. Now once most of that water comes out of them and uh, the pan's dried out a bit, add your butter. 
and your onions. Get them all in there. Now keep an eye on this because that is mushrooms are going to want to suck up that butter a lot. And uh, you need that to help brown everything. Turn this down a little bit because this process you want to do nice and slow if you want a good caramelization on your onions and your mushrooms. Take your time, it's worth it. See, it really sucked it up. Put a little more in there. Don't be scared. Alright, bring the eggs to the party. I like to use three eggs. I'm going to use two of these whole. The other one, I'm just going to use the yolk because it makes it nice and yolky and a good yolky omelet. Mmm! Just the yolk. Ooh, I'm turn that down more. Cooking a little bit too fast. Add a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. A little more pepper. Beat it up. Beat it real good. All right, that'll be ready to go for when we need it. Ooh, that smell! Can't you smell that smell? The smell it gets up in your nose. Yum! Okay, those are just about ready. We need to put our plantains in there. Now, when you're using these, you want to use nice little tiny leaves. Because they tend to get a little stringy. In fact, you can sort of see some of these have strings. Um, the leaves get super big like this. Get out of here, mosquito. So get super big like this. These are fine. They still have nutrients in them, and you can make tinctures and stuff out of those. In fact, we're going to do an entire video, hopefully, about the medical uses and the wonders of this humble little plantain plant most people think is a weed. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, he's got to go in there. Move these aside a little bit because they're ready to go. My buddy. Plantains going to the potty. These cook just like spinach. You just want to put them in here and wilt them down a little bit. Sometimes a little dash of water helps. These plantain does have a nice mild spinachy flavor it's really good and really good for you A little more water, that'll also help deglaze the pan. Get all that yumminess out of there. Alright, now that those are wilted down, go ahead and set this aside. Enter the nonstick pan. Now a lot of people get intimidated when it comes to making omelets. Really, you can be if you don't know what you're doing, but if you follow a few easy steps, like a really good nonstick pan, I like these copper pans, even though this has got a couple scratches in it. It came that way because it was only $2 at the thrift store. Can't beat it. But that's the trick, is a super good nonstick. If you look at your Teflon pans when you're going through the grocery store, if you're looking for one to make omelets with, if you look real close, you'll notice most Teflon pans actually have a texture to them. That texture is gonna not help the egg release, even though it is nonstick. You want super slippery when you're making an omelet. Plus, I like using these copper pans because I haul water. And if it's a good nonstick that I can just wipe out when I'm done, that's less water I gotta haul to do dishes. All right, once that pan's nice and hot under a good medium to medium high heat, mo butter. I'm going to get this out of the way because I'm going to need some room here. 
Make sure that gets sizzling good. When that sizzling goes down, that's when we're going to add our eggs. But make sure everything's ready to go. Because this is a process. There we go. In go the eggs. I need a little more heat. Now here's one of the tricks. Once you get your eggs in there, you want to shake your pan and mix your eggs for about 10-15 seconds. Then get them to spread back out. At this point, you can add your cheese. You can also add your plantains. And your mushrooms. Keep it all in the middle. Alright Nomies, at this point let me adjust the camera here a little bit. This is the key moment. You want to make sure your egg is nice and loose. You'll notice it's still a little bit runny. And this is where you're going to fold. Oh. Fold your omelet. Just like that. Now the trick to this is Make sure it's nice and loose. Get it to the edge of your pan. And fold it over. Look at that. Beautiful, ain't it? Nice and golden and soft. And since you got mushrooms and onions left over. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark. I'm drooling if you could smell such. All right, we got to try this thing. You ready? <laughs> Are you ready? All right. Let's dig into this thing. Oh my goodness. Oh, the cheese. Oh, the cheese and the mu- Oh, oh, oh. We gotta get a little bit of everything. stretch <laughs> you ready you want you want the first bite I'll give you the first bite all right you snooze you lose mm. oh my good the mushroom and the mm. 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 gotta try this one the plantain is a little bit cheerier than spinach, but it's still got that same good earthy flavor. I don't think you want to sit here and watch me drool all over myself, do you now? But before we go, we got one other thing we got to do. We almost forgot. You almost let me forgot. Remember these guys? Yep. That's what one pound of mushrooms looks like dehydrated. Loosely packed into a one pint jar. It's about all you get. But we're actually here to weigh them out, remember? What are we gonna need? These and these. Let's see what we got. Did you make your guess earlier? No cheating, no skip, no sk I hope you didn't skip ahead. I'm watching. Anyway, what do you think? Huh? 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 What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? All right, all right, I'll get on with it here. Get down, just get down here. All right, hopefully, you can see it. <laughs> a little bit. There we go. Get my fat gut out of the picture. Let's see. We got a scale. We're going to put this on the scale. We're going to turn the scale on and wait for it to do its thing. Is it ready? <gasps> it's ready. It's got a glitch. Don't mind that. So, what are you thinking? <laughs> what are you thinking? Here it goes. Huh, 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 huh. Voila! What is it? 1.1 1 .1 ounce. So out of one pounds of one pound of mushrooms, we got about one ounce of dehydrated. But that's okay, because you know what? Think of each one of these. Oh, where's it? Think of each one of these as a flavor bomb. A couple of those and some water. It's like a 
bouillon of deliciousness. There you go. One pound gets you one ounce of dehydrated mushrooms. And about a pint. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure as much as we did making it for you. You made this for... for uh, eat. Help me here for a second, Nomi One Kenobi. What the Gnome Stutter is trying to say is please hit the like button. It would be greatly appreciated and helps tremendously with the algorithm. Thank you. Back to you, Nomi. Thanks, buddy. So, next time, Rob's going to be back, actually. And we're going to take him on his very first f salmon fishing trip in Alaska. And he's going to catch his very first Alaska salmon. Where do you see the look on his face? It was amazing. Just uh, catching his first salmon. In fact, he got two even before the gnome. He could get his rod in the water almost. So that's coming up. And we got some pretty cool underwater shots too. So there you go, and there you are, and we're out of here. Until next time. Never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. I'm a gnome, he's a gnome, she's a gnome, you're a gnome, wouldn't you like to be a you know gnome? Put your comment down on the bottom. Click the subscribe down on the bottom. Click the like button down on the bottom. Or make a comment down on the bottom. Peace out.